Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's only time for one thing and one thing only, Rediscovering America. I'm Tim Apichal, your host, and today's title is The Law Wins, Lies of Voter Fraud Fails. 16 days ago, um, on Monday, Joe Biden was handed the proverbial metaphorical keys to the government. Government Services Administration, Emily Murphy handed over the keys, so to speak, to Joe Biden. So now he can start to receive funds and uh, briefings of what's taking place between now and January 20th. Donald Trump, in so many ways, acknowledged this transition. He did so by tweet, but he never, ever acknowledged that he has lost the election. We're now almost three weeks past election since November 3rd. Donald Trump refuses to acknowledge his loss in this election. In fact, today in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Kabuki Theater continues. Rudy Giuliani is now sitting in a mock setting of a hearing, telling the world, telling would-be donors that the election was stolen, that fraud was throughout the entire system, and Donald Trump had the election stolen away from him. Yet, 36 lawsuits in five states have been tossed out on their ears. The attorneys, 22 attorneys, have been laughed out of the courtroom, literally, almost. And yet, Donald Trump continues, his attorneys continue to say the election was stolen. Fraud everywhere. Election stolen from Donald Trump. Well, here's my theory. It's awfully hard to garnish and gain financial campaign donations from would-be donors when you have been labeled a loser. So Donald Trump can't admit that he's a loser because he needs to continue to raise campaign dollars to pay off campaign debt. This is nothing more than the apprentice at action. And Donald Trump is the master at the apprentice and theater, kabuki theater. So there you go. But here was the bright note. I don't know if everyone watched the transition start to take place. Joe Biden announcing new members of his new government, Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, the climate czar, John Kerry, Treasur Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, Alejandro Maracas, Maracas, Homeland Security Director, Linda Thomas Greenfield, Ambassador to the United Nations, Avril Haynes, Director of National Security, and Jake Sullivan, National Security Advisor. It was a touching moment. And the reason why it was a touching moment is because they pledged their allegiance to the mission of their agency. They, have they, they uh, basically committed that they were going to serve the nation, the country, and not their president. And that was refreshing. That is something we have not seen in years. And it was a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guests. Good morning, everyone. We have Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Stephanie Dalton. Welcome to Rediscovering America. Good morning. Hey, Jay, um, I know you saw Joe Biden introduce uh, his proposed um, cabinet or the beginning of his cabinet. And uh, I thought it was touching and I'd like to get your impressions. Oh, it wasn't a dry eye in the house. Uh, it, was, it was really interesting, uh, the, the stories they told, the, the personal experiences, their careers, their style, their personalities, their dedication to the government. Um, it, was, it was a beautiful moment, you're right. And um, I, I actually won't forget it. You know, the problem, the prob and it touched me, it touched a lot of, it touched millions of Americans. Uh, the problem is uh, where, where do we go from here? Because they're, they're gonna have to be, um, uh, you know, consented to in the Senate. If the Senate, if, if Mitch McConnell stays in charge of the Senate, uh, if the Republicans control the Senate, they're going to have, some of them are going to have a hard time. Even this, the Sterling candidates, they're going to have a hard time. So we're not out of the woods yet. You know, yeah. the battle, she is not over. Um, you know, and some of these guys are going to have trouble getting confirmed. Some of the ideas they advance will have trouble getting accepted in Congress. Right. You know, I just want to go back to the visual again of, of each proposed member of the cabinet and what they said and, and how, again, they committed themselves to the nation and to the Constitution. And juxtap 
and, and put that in opposition to four years ago when everyone was seated around the table um, committing loyalty to Donald Trump as they were going around the table and introducing themselves almost like it was a, a North Korean uh, praise to their, you know, their dear, you know, fearless leader. What a, what a difference in visuals that that we saw yesterday compared to four years ago. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, it was like a great weight lifted off our shoulders. And it, it, it brought alive that comment by the mayor of Paris, welcome back, America. Yeah. Other people are saying that too, welcome back, America. Uh, we, we have returned. We have demonstrated that our democracy, against all odds, works. Uh, we have demonstrated that we can have a civil government and we can relate to the world. A number of the appointments he made are people who are going who are gonna, be involved in foreign policy. And I think the world was out there waiting to see who he would appoint and, and how they could reconnect with us. It's, it's going to be a, a challenge to do all of that, um, but I am very encouraged by it. And, and I really hope that my, my theory works out. You, you, uh, you kind of touched on that a minute ago. Uh, my theory is that when Trump is out of office, the power will drain from him and he will no longer have the, the same huge base, the base will shrink dramatically simply because he's not in office and he, he doesn't have the bully pulpit and he, he's not the president. And that will, that will change things. In the meantime, yeah. um, before we get there, we're gonna have to cope with him. And I think we have to remember that too. We have 60 days um, and uh, geez, right around now, 60 days. And he is working feverishly and behind his back without telling the press. Press finds out through other sources. Uh, you know, that, that he's, um, he's monk mucking things up. He's throwing monkey wrenches in the, in the broth. Yeah. Um, for example, the, the overflight agreement between uh, United States and, and Vlad, um, Trump backed out of that. So now that we can't, we don't have the clear skies, open skies policy. And then what he did, I don't know if you guys heard, this is really gross. Then what he did after doing that, in order to finalize that, make it impossible to go back to it, he destroyed the planes that were used, American planes that were used in the, in the, in the Open Skies uh, Initiative. So, I mean, and that's only one example. Uh, there are many examples. That is what he is doing now. He is pulling the wings out of our economy, out of our foreign relations, out of our national security. Busy boy, every yeah. day for 60 days. Well, since you, broke, you brought up the Open Skies Treaty, um, yeah, it was the UC-135B planes that he's destroying almost similar to uh, removing the mailboxes off the streets to uh, thwart the election, election process. Uh, you know, but what I thought was amazing is if you wanted to get an answer out of what was going on, they went initially to the 55th um, Recon Squadron and they said, oh no, we can't talk to you. You have to talk to the Secretary of Defense. And then the Secretary of Defense says, no, 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 you have to go to the, um, the uh, command, the strategic command and get that answer from them. And then they referred them to the U.S. State Department. The U.S. State Department referred it to the Pentagon. And the Pentagon referred it back to the Air Force. And the Air Force declined to comment. Yeah, wow. disgusting. What it, what it shows you, though, is that there's a fear uh, you know, phenomenon working that, that military anyway is afraid of him uh, still because he's president. And there's a lot of legislators who are afraid of him, Republican legislators. And that's going to last until, you know, until the inauguration. And the big question is, to what extent is it going to last after the inauguration? I say less, um, but I say we have, we have to cope with it. And we have to watch out what he's doing with his hands behind his back, because Biden is going to have to deal with that later. Trump is making every effort, every strategical effort to bust our chops so that Biden cannot recover from the damage he does. This is gruesome. And it's more of the Trump we know and do not love. Yeah. Let me take those comments. Uh, Cynthia, look, Donald Trump's doing a, appears to be a scorched earth policy. What's his motivation other than the fact that he lost to Joe Biden, which he said he could never lose to a, a candidate like that. And if he ever did, he might have to leave the country. But what's his, what's his motivation for willfully undermining the next administration and ultimately hurting all Americans, not just Joe Biden? Well, he wants to show the country that they made a big mistake by voting for Biden. So anything that he can do to destroy, like you said, that scorched earth um, attitude and, and approach, 
so that that he Joe will have more trouble getting things going. It will make more damage in the long run of his presidency. He won't be able to get as many things accomplished as he needs to. And then Trump can, from the outside, go, look, see how much he's ruined the country. Because we don't really see the effects of all the things he's doing just yet. So when Joe Biden gets into office, excuse me, president-elect Joe Biden gets into office, he will... um, he will not be able to do a lot of things. And then Trump can stand on the outside and go, look, see, you guys made a mistake. Look at how messed up everything is. And I, I think that's why he's doing it. Well, I, it's mm-hmm. obvious if I say this, but it's very narcissistic and very immature, uh, oh, yeah. that approach. But we know for the last four years, that's where we've been with this, this administration and certainly with this president. Uh, what was your impression of the, the introduction of cabinet members to the Biden administration? There wasn't a dry eye at my house either. Even the dog was crying. We were so happy. <laughs> and then this morning to hear, as I was getting ready to come on, on camera, um, I was listening to the speech that he gave this morning. It was amazing. I had goosebumps the whole time. I was kind of late getting to my ca- my computer even because I didn't want to leave the, you know, the, I had to keep going back to the television so I could watch what was going on and really be closer involved. <clears throat> it's, it's amazing. And I love that his slogan is build back better. You know, I, I keep thinking about uh, Trump's, and when he first did this re-election campaign, he was going to change it to keep America great, right? But America's a mess, so he, could, he couldn't do that, right? So he went back to the other one. <clears throat> to make America great. But it's, and he stole that from Ronald Reagan. He, he says that he's the one who made it up when in reality, that was Ronald Reagan. I've seen video footage of Ronald Reagan saying, make America great again. Ah, that was his main slogan for his campaign. So, you know, just one more stupid lie that, you know, he could say, I got this from Reagan and it's really great, so I'm going to use it. But well, he no, can't do that. That's not in his wheelhouse. About how he's the one who made it up. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Hey, Winston. What what changed Donald Trump's mind to finally acknowledge that Joe Biden can start getting um, dollars and uh, briefings? What what changed his mind? That's a really good question, and I don't know the answer, but I imagine that it had to do with the business roundtable kicking in and uh, top 150 CEOs pulling the plug along with the sponsors and saying, do you want any money for anything in the future? Because we're not going to get you out of debt or finance any other project or any other potential um, election things for you to do our bidding. If you don't at least turn over the keys for now, you can still never say you, you lost or you're not conceding, but you got to start this thing because otherwise our stock prices are going to go down. We're going to feel it in the wallet. It's, I, I'm going to guess it's the almighty dollar because it, yeah. it wasn't. I think it's a very good observation. I think uh, Blackstone CEO Steve Schwartz was part of that, uh, that led that effort, um, basically telling the president, yeah, you, you're going you're gonna to damage us. Maybe and, Chris Christie had a hand in it, too. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it could be. I, I think that, that that just sort of gave him cover because he didn't really criticize the president. He criticized his, his legal staff, saying that they were an embarrassment to the nation and it was time to end uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the lawsuits. So really, you know, it was a soft way to go about it. Um, I, I, you know, you have then maybe just it was the court of public opinion where they went around the room and sampled some people and said, what do you think about this? You know, there's some really good articles out there. Um, the, the Georgia Secretary of State, uh, Raffensperger, uh, he talks about being thrown under the bus by uh, Donald Trump, even though he said he voted for him and he wanted him to win. But he was he's basically trying to subvert rule of law in the country. And I think that resonated with a lot of people. But they all waited. You saw that on Monday. Then a few more Republicans came out and then the roundtable and then the uh, all the every single national intelligence officer that's still alive, that's not directly working for him now, that still has a pulse came out. Uh, and you had also um, then every uh, health health officer, you know, basically saying 
we need we need to acknowledge reality here and we love coddling you but it's not going to happen anymore so um i i think that they probably said do you still want to as uh, politico says threaten to wreak havoc on the gop from beyond the white house or not because you're going to lose all credibility with people but i'm not so sure about that either i think that when you look at the the, the right wing media uh, and how they say that most Republicans don't view this as a legitimate election, but when you have Donald Trump constantly tweeting out that it was fraud, that it was fake, that it was, um, you know, not real, how are they going to believe anything else when that's their news source? It's his tweets and and uh, well, you know, America One Network. You and know, the, the the title of the show is "The Law Wins." I mean, there's 36 lawsuits that that were entered into court, and no merit was shown as evidence to support the claim that there was fraudulent activity in five states. That's I mean, right. at what point do, does evidence in the, in the rule of law prevail over Donald Trump's wild, wild statements just so he can fundraise? I think when those Republicans, you know, when he reached down to the lady in um, uh, where Detroit, where that county, I know it was Wayne County, and Wayne called county. her and said, Hey, just want to talk about those election results in Detroit. So do you think they were really fair? And she says there was no pressure put on her. When the president of the United States calls you and gives your name and says, oh, you know, we had a chat or it's leaked anyway in whatever way, do you think that that's not a little bit of pressure on her to, to try and change her vote? I mean, is it the, that sort of thing. I think really rankles ordinary Americans and also all the people that have been cowed by him thinking, am I next to be put up on the on the altar to be sacrificed for just being a civil servant and and saying this election was free and fair, as every single state has done uh, so far and his own, um, you know, uh, they're not cabinet ministers, uh, our version of cabinet ministers. Uh, you know, who got fired for saying this was a free election. Well, yeah. you know, well, yeah. let, me, let me jump in for a minute, Tim. Um, and that is, I believe that there, there are there are a lot of people in government now among the Republicans, among the bureaucracy who are intimidated by him, who have been intimidated. After January 20th, they're going to come out. They're going to come out and, and, and they're going to go to the media. And there's going to be a huge, a huge uprising against him because he will have no way to fire them. No way, I and mean, his attacks will be relatively meaningless. Is it They're too little, too late? Out there. Is it too little, too late? No, it's not too late in terms of uh, stopping him from continuing his power, his power trip. Okay. And it will undermine him. Okay, great. Okay, hey, uh, Stephanie, let me go to you on, on a point. Uh, you know, there seems to be a correlation between all the counties that Donald Trump is disputing and the population of African Americans in those counties. I mean, if you really look at all the challenges, it looks like he's going after black residents and their, their ability to vote for a president. Uh, any, any observations on that point? Shameless, utterly shameless. And um, I just think that we have had, yesterday we had our values clarified and that is what I heard is all that is in my understanding of who and what we are. And also the brief biographies were from people who have served and, and exhibited and exemplified those values. So it was clearly um, a call back to our framework, our, our values framework. That's what we are and that's what we've saved otherwise we wouldn't have. So my, my sense of it, my image of it is we're on the, uh, we're on the shuttle and they just lit the fire. In fact, I think Bi Biden turned on engine one with the meeting of the task force for a virus. And those huge, huge engines are sitting there warming up already one going and that sucker is going to get lit up the rest of the way and it's going to rise and it's going to bring america not only back to um the, the 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 comrades and allies but it's going to take its place in in leadership like no yeah. other can. if no. you're if you're an african-american voter and you're you know you're being accused that only in detroit or atlanta uh philadelphia and uh it's you know, it's it's filled with fraud. Um, if you're a voter in Georgia and you know that you're going to vote here in January or you have the ability to vote in January, does that motivate you to either register and show up and vote? 
uh, or does it make any difference that you've been disenfranchised or attempted to be disenfranchised? And does that motivate you to get out of the chair and, 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 and say your mind, speak your mind in the way of a vote? Well, I think that it might for many people, but the important point that has to be given out to, to everybody, and especially African Americans in Georgia, who, who have, I think, a, a pretty big minority there, if not a majority, but once that rocket, once the shuttle's up there, there's somebody sitting in a great big black <laughs> airship <laughs> called Mr. McConnell. Okay, so we can turn that, we can raise that shuttle, launch that shuttle, and we're gonna be just like Challenger coming to pieces up there if if he doesn't get moved. This thing- Okay, let me go to Jay's point. Jay's point made earlier in the show was that the Senate Republicans may very well take the ball, like they did to President Obama, and say, we're not playing, we're not gonna do anything. And if you wanna get anything done, you're gonna have to do it by executive order. Do you think that takes place or, or will GOP senators actually come to say, we have to get something done in the, for all the, the nation's residents and citizens, and we have to do something because the, the country's fabric is tearing apart. Does but that take your, place or do they just say, we're gonna be obstructionist? Well, but, but the point is, it's not their choice. It's the people that will choose that by not electing those two people and knocking a, McC a McConnell out of position because my, um, um, just to finish, why is Mitch McConnell running the country for the last 12 years? Why? He's the one running the country. So that is what people have to understand. Yeah, good point. Because we'll be completely, it's useless. Like I said, the challenger. That's what Mitch McConnell will do. There goes our launch. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm intense on Countdown that. Countdown begins January 3rd. <laughs> Okay, hey Jay, um, there's a congressman by the name of Bill Pascal. I think it's Pascal, he's out of New Jersey. And he's um, requesting that the Bar Association look at the 22 um, lawyers that have been presenting these, these claims of fraud in the election process. And he's asking the Bar Association to look at them and potentially disbar them and, and, and take away their licenses and doing so because of misrepresentation and claims without evidence. Uh, your thoughts on that potential um, action yeah, I, at the Bar I Association? Think he's, he's skipping a step. You know, there's this thing called uh, Rule 16. It uh, refers to frivolous lawsuits and frivolous arguments. And if you're a sitting judge and somebody comes before you with a frivolous lawsuit, as these have been, or a frivolous argument in aid of that lawsuit, the judge has the right, the power uh, to discipline you for that. I don't think in any of the cases you mentioned that, that that motion has been made or the judges have actually ruled that it's frivolous. Had they done that, even some of them, in some of those cases, um, the prospect of having the Bar Association disbar them, by the way, it's state by state, right? Um, you know, would, uh, would be much greater if there had been findings of frivolity. I, I think it probably will go away, but if you ask me whether it should happen on a normative level, I think it should happen. We have to discourage this kind of professional conduct. We have seen lawyers do things that are extraordinary. Don't forget what happened in the impeachment uh, proceedings. Uh, some of the lawyers and some of them appeared on national television, re Republican lawyers were making the most outrageous statements under cover of their professional license. Um, they should have been taken to task. And, and well, these lawyers now should be taken to task. And it should be a professional effort. But I have to say that the bar associations belong to the states. And the American Bar Association has been effectively neutralized in dealing with Trump. Okay, well, we're talking about bar associations and ramifications, and uh, the question comes up after Donald Trump leaves office, should he be prosecuted? Uh, obviously, he may try to pardon himself. I don't think that's going to work. But uh, number one, on a national level, should he be pardoned by Joe Biden or anybody? Um, or, and or should the state of New York go after him? Should they pursue Donald Trump? Um, you're asking somebody who has a, has a bias. 
Um, but my, my feeling is that, um, no, that, well, the pardon may work. He may do that. You know, the talk for a long time about how he would resign and have Pence uh, pardon him. And I think that's legal. I'm not sure why it wouldn't be legal. It's, it's his power, the president's power. And that would be a, a, a sort of a cute maneuver, a nuanced maneuver to have Pence pardon him. But let's assume that doesn't happen. And I, I commend Cyrus fans for chasing him around in, you know, in, the, in the state of New York in Manhattan. And I would hope that goes forward. I'm a little less optimistic about what would happen in the federal courts. Um, but that, you know, that is, there's probably a lot of lawyers and prosecutors uh, uh, in, and judges in the federal courts who would, be, who would be fine with prosecuting Trump. The big question, and we haven't seen it surface yet, is who is Biden going to appoint as the attorney general? Correct. A lot of this hangs on that. I know Biden is a nice fellow and he wants to move ahead and he doesn't want to dwell in, in rancor and, you know, and, and, and controversy. But on a, on a moral level, Trump has done some incredibly evil, bad things. And he really, according to the people I know, should be punished. Okay, thank you, Jay. Same question to you, Cynthia. Did the uh, South District of uh, Manhattan go after Donald Trump? Oh, yes, absolutely. He has so much fraud and uh, tax fraud and um, all sorts of illegal business activity. And then, you know, over in my wheelhouse, there's E. Jean Carroll and her lawsuit that's still out there. And her last comment was, once he's not president, that will go forward. And as soon as we have a deposition, we will take his DNA and they did find male DNA on the dress that she was wearing the day she was raped. So okay. if they can match that DNA to Donald, then poof, he's gone. That's it. He's toast. Even all of the people that love him will go, wait a minute, he raped somebody? And some of them will still go, oh, she probably wanted it. And for the most part, you know, most of the people that are normal people, Republicans, and there's plenty of them, that voted for him, right? Not all of them are Trumplicans, only some of them. And it won't change the Trumplicans, but it will change the conservative Republicans that have supported him all along, is what I think anyway. So I, I'd like to make one uh, short little statement about some of the things I've been saying over these last months. Okay, we got about a minute left, so very quickly. Very quickly. Misinformation is still out there. Nobody is immune. It's very, very important to really look, take a deep dive into every single piece of information that you are getting to make sure that it really is the real deal. I think maybe I was caught by some sort of, you know, old fish hook there with the Dominion company and stuff. So I'm not sure if he was just trying to flip the script and it was real or it wasn't real at all. But be careful. That's because if I could fall for it, then anyone can fall for it. So be careful. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, Winston, uh, we're out of time, basically. What's your Thanksgiving wish and uh, your last words? Uh, you know, America held, but it, it's got, uh, I just point a couple people. Did American democracy really hold? Maybe not. Article in Politico. Please read that, folks. Another one is. Um, Jake Chapper on politics and media in Vanity Fair. It's a little bit of a longer read, but uh, you know we have to understand what's happened to our country. Do the deep dive inside. A lot of misinformation out there, as Cynthia said, and a lot of scared people still, especially Republicans. And uh, as Washington Post said, the party's divided into two. Let's hope that principled Republicans are able to come back. Donald Trump's voice is marginalized too. Uh, fringe to fringe people, and that we can regain a sense of normalcy and decency in this nation. Uh, and the Republican Party that, that that you know we may not have agreed with in the past, but that what that was stood for um, you know principled people and and ideas. So I think our our we have a lot to be thankful for this week. Our nation has held the transfer of power is taking place, and uh, we will move forward and just clean up. Start with All the right. damage. Clean up. Thank you, Winston. Stephanie, you get your last word. Thanksgiving wish. Go Georgia.
eliminate Mitch McConnell. Oh, Give yeah. us our country back. <laughs> We've got a chance. All now, right. From your lips to God's ears, as Jay likes to say, and I agree. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go on that. Um, I, I'd like to uh, close. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I'd like to close by saying we're not going to have, uh, in many households around America, we're not going to have the traditional Thanksgiving that we haven't had in years past. But we'll make the best of it, and we'll muddle through it. But I'd just like to say that we're all very blessed. Um, and I'd like to just say for all Americans, be it no matter how you voted, that uh, wishing for a very safe Thanksgiving and uh, prosperous time to come for all Americans. So without further ado, I'd like to say thank you one and all. Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Thank you for joining us on Rediscovering America. I'm Tim Apicella, your host, and God bless America and have a nice, happy Thanksgiving. Aloha.